With some more setting, you can add more facial expression for your Flux image. We are going to explore how to add face expression with Flux Diffusion Model in Comfy UI. Hello everyone. We're going to talk about the expressions editor in this custom node. Before playing around with this node, you need to install the Comfy UI Advanced Live Portrait Custom Nodes. This is another live portrait custom node for creating facial expressions. You can check out previous videos on how we install Live Portrait. Once you have the AI models for Live Portrait, you're able to just install these custom nodes and run them without any additional AI model files installed. Some simple workflows will be in the custom nodes folder in the sample subfolder. This time, we're not going to make AI videos talking or AI avatars using these custom nodes. Instead, we're talking about the face expressions editor. This is specifically for static images. It's very good to use if you want to make some expressions with your image. For example, I have an image here, just a generated image from previously, and it's just a normal smiling face of a character. We can use a reference image by linking up the sample image here. It will duplicate the facial expressions of this character's face and pass that to what we have in the incoming image. It's similar to the concept of reactor face swap, where you have one face for the source and one face for the sampling face. But this time, we're only replicating the facial expressions. You can also use data styles to play around with, because as you can see, there are a lot of settings for the eyeballs, tweaking, some smiling settings, and also the head rotations left and right, pitch up and down, etc. You can set those styles here. For example, I've got all these number settings already. You can do one-time generations with an image in the preview image or save that in the image files. Or you can use this one called the save expression, which you're going to link up to the save express data. Here you'll link up this one just like that and give it a name for the expression. For example, this is face express 01. I put that in a more systematic way to do the facial expressions by the numbers that I identified for the file names. You can use whatever names you want, and once we have processed this one time, it will create a saved expressions file. We can load that after the second time, or in the future we can reuse those expressions by using the load express data. When we have the file saved, we'll have the file name face express 01 appear on the file name in the load express data custom nodes and we're going to link this express data to add express. This way we can load the existing expressions data to reuse again and again. So the first time we don't have any express data yet. In order to do that, the first time we always have to save a new expression. So I'll just put both this load data and the save express data together here. In case we have to use some new face expressions, we'll have to save those expressions for later use or if we already have some expression data that we can reuse for our processing image, then we'll do that using the load express data custom nodes. Another way to use the face expressions is the express data itself here, and this express data node acts as the saved files on the above node that we just mentioned for saved data and load data. But instead, this is only for showing you the code and the value. I think it's a more scientific way and not going to be used often for normal use cases, so you can bypass this one. But if you really want to use this express data, then you can link up any existing facial express data here. Because the input parameters are also called add express and we have the output express as well. It's also the same data type. So yeah, you can use this way to do the existing load express data and pass that to this node and modify whatever values in here. Just do a small tweak of, for example, the eyes or the nose and maybe the facial angles of the head as well and then do another new image output. But if you don't need that little tweak of whatever existing loading expressions data you have, then you can bypass this. I think most people won't need to use that custom node very often. So what we'll try in these videos is using two methods. One is using the saved data way to save our facial expressions data, and the other way is using an existing image. For example, I have this image, the smiling face, and let's see what we'll have using two methods. And in the beginning we don't have any facial expressions data. As you can see, there are no values in this dropdown. So we don't need to connect that for the first time when we don't have any face data. 
So what we're going to do is save the data the first time. For example, I can put this smiling face into the input data for the sample image, and then we can run it the first time to save this smiling face as the facial expressions data. This way, maybe I can do like face express smile 01. That's easier to allow me to recognize what that face data is. Then let's run this image one time and you'll see how that goes. This is just a normal image to image flux examples workflow I've played around with a lot of times in other videos and we can try this. Then my plan is to modify the face, have some more expressions on the face rather than just a robotic face. You see a lot of Instagram AI influencers. A lot of those AI character image feel like they are stone. So we have more ways to do some face expressions, make it more dynamic, and then next steps we can pass to the flux control net upscales. This is one method to upscale, or if someone likes the traditional way or the older method, we can use the ultimate SD upscale. Either one is fine. We don't have to just stick to one method like some stubborn people. So here, this is the second part of Upscaler. But I think in between this part, we'll do another face detailer before passing to Upscaler. So let's try these two first and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the first sampling image is generated and we're seeing the processing data here. And as you can see, there are some crazy things going on. So why does this face look different than my input image? because there are some imported settings already existing here. So what we're going to do is just go back to make this zero without any interference of what we have in this existing face image. So set it back to default values in the face expressions editor. And let's try one more time. And as you can see, this is going to, in this case, combine the input image for the sample face and also combine the data in the expressions editor that I haven't forgotten to reset all this by default. So let's try one more time and this will go to another result. So as you can see, after a few times I generated, even though we have the smiling face and we have saved that already in the save express data after we run the first time. And if you want to overwrite the existing data in the same files of the express data, then you can click Q prompt again to overwrite whatever is in the existing files. And you can click the refresh button here and you'll see the load express data custom notes will appear with this saved data for the facial expressions. So there you have the facial expressions data already saved in your system. And once we have this, we can reuse that without using the load image styles. So for example, I have this facial expressions data. We can just plug that into the add expressions and we can remove the save express data because we don't have to overwrite that again and again. Uh, this is well a little bit smiling and, you know, compared with what we have from the first sampling image, it is clearly a different face. You can see that. So you still need to tweak the styles a few times. If you're not happy with how the facial expression looks in the output image on this group, you might want to do additional settings here like what I just did the first time that had not put all these values to zero. It will happen to add some other expressions combining with what I have in the load image as well. So right now, I have the same facial expressions loaded in the load face expressions data. So for example, this file I have this smiling face, and I'll try another image uh, rather than this one to see. So the other image here I have, again, another AI generated image. Um, previously, I had this one for demo and we can try this smiling face going to look like this facial expression with this new image. So let's try that and see how that goes. And yep, we got another expression of that face and combining. This is the first sampling image getting from here, the load image going to flux first sampling, and then we got another facial expression here. And let's say I want to edit this image the facial expressions and the head rotation. Sometimes I want to make it a little higher. There are always different situations for different images. You can't just use one loading data of the face expressions and apply it to every image, right? So we've got to be flexible, don't be stubborn, and we've got to edit whatever we have. 
Once we're happy with our facial expressions, then we can try that on. So as you can see, the rotation of the head is going down right now. So it looks like we have to go back to 0 minus 4 and see that will tilt up the head a little. And let's tilt a little more. Yeah. And there you go. We have more tilting up right now. And uh, for example, based on the smiling face facial expressions data, we can use something like the eyes blinking, tweaking like that. And so make it more dynamic for the face as well. So as you can see, the eyes are starting to have the tweak. And let's say I go for 30 and see how obvious that is, or 25. Okay, so fully 25. The eye on the right is blinking. And we got the face of this smiling face that I have loaded into the load facial expressions data and combined that with a little editing with what I have in the face expressions editor. Do the eye wink and the head rotations move a little bit so that it looks different from what we have. Of course, this is not going to be the final step of what we want to do. As you can see, it's blurry in this part. Based on this image, we can do a second detailer. Some people like to use SDXL for adding detail, and some can use everything on Flux, whichever you prefer. Since I just loaded the Flux checkpoint models, I'll just use Flux for ongoing second detailers here. It's very simple. We can use another sampling step here to refine those blur effects from the facial editor. It's only editing the facial expressions, but it doesn't do any detailing for the pixels as well. So what we have to do here is add another sampler. Let's see if that's going to improve what we have. Before that, I dragged those data from our models loader. We're starting to connect for the second sampling here and then also the models data. Once we have this, we again need the text prompts so we can get them from the foreign tool that I've loaded. Hopefully, that's not going to cause any errors and will be an easier way to do this. Lastly, we have to connect this output image, which is from here, and process that. Here, we set this denoise to 0.2 because we don't want too much change for the facial expressions. This time, we need another VAE code. That's basically it for the second sampling. Next, we'll have our output image based on the facial expressions image that we have here. So let's run it once and see how it goes. Here we have the second image, which is very similar to what we have in the facial expressions image. Again, we have to tweak a little bit here. Let's say we can try to denoise numbers, playing this numbers game in these settings, and then we can do the upscalers later. Okay. That looks clearer on the blinking eyes. Then we can try to, uh, let's say we've done this part. Bring it to upscalers at this moment. So let's say I have two methods here. One is the ultimate upscale. I call this the upscale learner one. And some people misunderstand why, uh, what's the difference between the ultimate upscales, although it's using the tile processors like control net styles to pass in here, and what we have in the previous videos where we talked about the flux control net upscales. The control net upscales in Flux are purely using the control net models to upscale that image. That's why it will process a little slower, and it will just be using the Flux Diffusion models to process the whole thing, rather than the Ultimate SD upscale, which is using upscale models. It's very clear to see. That's the difference between this structure and the control net upscales. Just like what we did in the SDXL tile diffusions with the tile upscale method, that's another way to just use the diffusion model to enlarge the image. So this way we're again bringing this data here for another upscale and then we have again bringing all these models data to the third steps. And then we have two groups here and another two groups for outputting the image. Again, the image preview output on each side is going to be easier to look at. The upper one is the flux CN upscales. You can use whichever you like and I'll just bypass this at this moment. We're going to do an upscaler normal style, which people find easier to understand. Here, we have to go back to using flux settings and try this to upscale by two times. We're going to use CFG1 as usual for flux, and let's see how it performs. We have the result again. We're using the tile upscales control net and using the ultimate upscale. This is the model's data from Flux, 
So all the way from here, we're using the flux models only, and this can be processed both ways using this upscaler. This time, we can use this upscaler, the CN upscaler, and try that out. We've missed one thing. Connect the VAE and see how that goes. So we've got to cancel this one and go to the flux CN upscale and try this method. Again, both methods consume a little bit of time. The one below is the ultimate SD upscale that I just used. Both results are pretty similar. It's just, you know, enlarging the image size after we did the second sampling here, re-rendering the whole image after the facial expressions processing. As you can see there, the face expressions editor modifies the face, but then some details are missing and it's kind of blurry in the middle. Once it changes, the eyes blinking and some smiling wrinkles are blurry. So we're passing here to sharpen everything. And then the last step is upscale. Of course, you can use just one upscaling method. You don't have to do both ways. This workflow is just for demo purposes. And just to let you guys know that we can use all kinds of methods to run. We don't have to be stubborn and stick to only one method. Let's group this a little more nicely, tidying up everything. So there you go. We got the facial expressions by one image like this, and we bring it to Flux using face expressions to make it more expressive than a stone robotic face. Then we can use that to enhance for further purposes, whichever you like. This is again, another simple method using that facial expressions editor to enhance your facial expressions by using just these nodes here. You can save those data as well or use existing images for facial expressions. So if you missed some part, check out this video in the middle to see how I did that. And I'll see you guys in the next videos. Stay inspiring and stay open-minded. Have a nice day. See ya.